So, let us do some more problems on uh, central forces especially inverse square attractive central force and the first question is this an object of mass m is projected from the earth surface at an angle of 60 degrees from the vertical with a speed v naught equal to square root g m by r where m is the mass of the earth and r is its radius. So, you have uh, earth and then you are somewhere here this is vertical and from the vertical making an angle of 60 degrees the particle is projected with some speed v naught which is given here. And then the question is find the maximum height the object attains. So, you must have done such problems uh, in class 11 or even maybe even before, but then the speeds were in meters per second and here the speed is much much larger it is in terms of mass of the earth and the radius of the earth and the speed is square root of g m by r which will be in kilometers per second. So, that is why the approximation of constant g cannot be taken here. So, we know this uh, particle will be attracted by the earth and the force of attraction will be minus g m m over r square which is of the type minus k by r square we have studied with k is equal to g m m. So, it is inverse square attractive force under which it is traveling. So, it will go in an elliptical path and hit somewhere. So, we want to know maybe maybe it will hit somewhere or may not. This is the maximum distance this is the maximum height you know height is uh, the distance from the center. So, I should draw a slightly better diagram ok it do not be better because this is not circle fine. So, we need this r max from the center of the earth the farthest distance that is the height maximum height that is uh, obtained in fact, this is the maximum height minus this capital R but nevertheless we will call this as r max in our terminology. So, it is going in ellipse and I want to know what is r max ok. So, what should be our strategy we have to get this maximum value of r and uh, you know this maximum value of r for inverse square attractive force is given by L square by m k and divided by 1 minus eccentricity. This is r max and r min is this quantity divided by 1 plus e and what is this e eccentricity? This is a square root of 1 plus 2 u L square divided by m k square. So, our plan will be to calculate L and u, L is a constant of motion, u is a constant of motion and we can get the values of L and u from this initial point. We can calculate L here, we can calculate u here and that those values will remain same as it goes in this elliptical orbit. Okay. So, we calculate u and L once we calculate u and l then we can calculate this e and once we have this e here and l we calculate then we can calculate this r max. So, that is the strategy. So, let us calculate l and then u. So, what is l at this point at this point what is l m into v into r into cos sin whatever sin 60 degrees right because only this component this tangential component will contribute in L r cross p this radial component r cross p this will give 0 and this component is v naught sin 60 degrees. So, mass into this v naught sin 60 degrees in the distance capital R that is our L. So, this is m and v naught is given to us g capital m by r 
and then this r here and then this sin 60 degree root 3 by 2. So, let us take uh, everything inside let us take everything inside this square bracket. So, this is r here this is r here. So, let us take everything inside this m becomes m square capital G is there m is there this r will come inside as r square and with this r it will be capital R here then uh, 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 that is L and this L is calculated at this point but this is the L everywhere in the whole of the orbit whether it, it hits here or whether it goes in a in another path or whatever it does ok then u u is kinetic energy half v naught square and potential energy we are talking of this point minus g m m over r at this point the distance is r. So, it is this and this is half m v naught square is g m over r that is v naught square and then minus g m m divided by r if you take this g m m by r common it is half minus 1. So, it is minus g m m over 2 r that is it. Now, let us calculate this eccentricity E and for that uh, you have this equation. So, first let us calculate this quantity 2 u l square divided by m k square is equal to 2 into u u is minus g m m over 2 r into l square l square is 3 small m square then g m capital r and divided by 4 that is l square so 2 u l square divided by m k square m and k is g m m square of that. So, g m and then small m and square of that. So, g m square and m square it is like this k square g m square and m square. So, m square g m square that is our k square and this m here and now see what simplification can be done. So, you have g m here, you have g m here and you have g m square here. So, they cancel out right. Then you have m here, you have m square here that is m cube and you have m here and m square here they cancel out m cube, m cube cancel out. You have this uh, r here, you have this r here you have this r here that cancels out. So, what is left only the numbers only the numbers and what are those numbers this 2 can be cancelled with this 2. So, it is minus here and then then this 2 is already gone this r is gone g m m is gone into 3 by 4. So, into 3 by 4 is here and that is all and that is all everything else has cancelled out. So, this quantity is minus 3 by 4 and therefore, eccentricity therefore, eccentricity is equal to square root of square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus this whole quantity and this whole quantity is minus 3 by 4. So, this is 1 minus 3 by 4 and that is square root of 1 by 4 and that is half. So, the eccentricity of this ellipse the object is going on an elliptical path and eccentricity of that uh, is 1 by 2. So, what is r max r max r max is here l square by m k divided by 1 minus e. So, r max is equal to r max is equal to l square l square is here l square. 
so 3 m square g capital m r divided by 4 that is l square divided by m k divided by m k small m and k k is g m m right g m m k is g m m so we have written l square that is l square then divided by m and then this uh, k and uh, so this is l square by m k divided by the whole thing divided by 1 minus eccentricity that means 1 minus half so once again you have uh, m square m here m here and m square here cancel out g into m g into m cancel out and what is left 3 into r here 3 into r here and then 4 here and then half here that will go up so that will become into 2 and this is 3 r by 2 this is r max from the center to the highest point is 3 r by 2 and therefore the height maximum height is 3 r by 2 and minus r and that is r by 2. So, that is the maximum height over the ground. So, our next question is this you have this diagram and read the question in its reference a spacecraft is going in a circular orbit of radius 2 r around the earth. So, here is the earth and this spacecraft is going in a circular orbit of radius 2 times r where r is the radius of the earth. It is to be taken in a circular orbit of radius 4 r. So, it is going in this orbit, but then it is to be taken in this circular orbit whose radius is 4 r. The first part is what is the minimum energy to be spent in this operation. So, minimum energy to be spent is same as the increase in energy as it goes from this circular orbit to that circular orbit that much we have to do if there is no other waste. Okay. So, part A energy in, in orbit of radius 2r. So, when it is in this uh, circular orbit what is the energy? So, you can write that energy you have total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy and the kinetic energy you can easily write if m is the mass of the spacecraft mv square divided by the radius 2r this should be the force and that is g m m divided by 2 r square. Okay, so, this is the force on this spacecraft towards the center and that force should be equal to mass times acceleration. So, here is the mass and here is the acceleration v square divided by the radius of the orbit. And so, half m v square is equal to this r goes on that side g m m by 4 r so that is the kinetic energy and the potential energy here is potential energy here is minus g m m and divided by 2 r. So, what is the total energy? The total energy is g m m divided by 4 r and minus g m m divided by 2 r which will be minus g m m divided by 4 r has to be negative for the bound orbit the total energy must be negative in uh, at least in this inverse square central force attractive force. Then energy when this uh, goes to this orbit this circular orbit in the second orbit. 
So that energy, energy in the orbit of radius 4 r is in a similar fashion you, will, you can write v m times v square divided by 4 r is equal to g m m divided by 4 r square and that gives me m v square half m v square is equal to half m v square is equal to 2 r will go on that side. So, g m m and here it should have been 16 r square, but 2 r is here. So, 8 times r right 8 times r that is the kinetic energy and then potential energy you can write potential energy is minus g m m divided by 4 r when it is at the distance 4 r. So, the total energy is in this case is total energy is g m m over 8 r and minus g m m over 4 r which is equal to minus g m m over 8 r. Very simple in fact in place of 2 r you have to write 4 r. So, in place of r you have to write uh, 2 r. So, it has to be minus g m m by 8 r which is here. So, how much is the change in energy between this uh, smaller circular orbit and the larger circular orbit. So, the change in energy is equal to this energy minus g m m over 8 r and minus the energy in the previous orbit which is minus g m m by 4 r. And how much is this? this is g m m by 4 r minus g m m by 8 r. So, it is plus g m m by 8 r right. This is positive, this is negative. If this goes to that side, it will add and then it will be double of this and that is this. So, this much is the increase in energy that meant energy has to be supplied to the spacecraft and if there are some uh, other form of energy wasted then that will be more, but minimum this energy is to be spent if you want to take this uh, spacecraft from this orbit to this orbit. So, that is part A. So, part B it is to be done in two stages. In the first stage rockets are fired at point A taking it to an elliptical orbit with the nearest point at a distance 2 r and the farthest point at a distance 4 r as shown in the figure. So, in the first circular orbit when it is here rockets are fired. So, what are the rockets going to do? Change the speed and because of this change in speed energy is uh, increased and it goes in an elliptical orbit. Remember that V effective R graph it has a minimum. If uh, the radius or the energy is at the bottom of that it is circular orbit and if you increase the energy then you have two turning points R 1 and R 2. So, you have R minimum and R maximum. So, that elliptical orbit is here it is the minimum distance is this much 2 r and this elliptical orbit the maximum distance is 4 r and it reaches b. So, that is the first stage to take it from the circular orbit to this elliptical orbit. So, this is it and uh, find the change in the speed at a when the rockets are fired. So, this is it. Now, so we are going from the circular orbit of radius 2 r to this particular elliptical orbit and we are asked how much is the change in the speed. So, energy when in in the circular orbit of 
of radius 2r is say e1 we have just calculated it that was minus g m m over 4 r. We calculated kinetic energy, we calculated potential energy, we added to get this energy. There was a simple procedure and that is if you remember the energy is minus k by 2 a for any elliptical orbit under inverse square attractive force the energy is minus k divided by 2 a and this 2 a is the major axis a is the semi major axis. So, if you have a circular orbit then uh, this major axis minor axis are same and that is here to here and that is 2 times the radius and this is radius is 2 r. So, 2 times the radius is 4 r and k is of course, g m m. So, it is minus g m m and divided by this is the radius. So, it is 4 r. So, there is a simpler way of doing it and I will be using it for the elliptical orbit. Okay. Now, for the elliptical orbit energy when it goes to the elliptical orbit E 2 let us say that E 2 will be equal to minus k by 2 a. So, minus g m m by 2 a what is 2 a this minimum distance here is uh, 2 r and the maximum distance here is 4 r and the major axis is 2 r plus 4 r that is 6 r. So, it is 6 r. So, this is the energy it is here from here you can get the from here you can get the velocity because half m v square and minus g m m by 2 r that is the energy kinetic energy and plus potential energy is equal to minus g m m over 4 r and therefore, half m v square is equal to this will go to that side and it will be g m m over 4 r. So, m cancels out and therefore, v square is equal to v square is equal to 2 goes here g m by 2 r and so v is equal to square root of g m over 2 r. And what happens here total energy is given the total energy is half m v square that is the kinetic energy and minus g m m remember I am here, I am here we are talking here we are going in a circular orbit and now we are changing to elliptical orbit and what is the change in the speed that is asked. So, the potential energy remains the same minus g m m by 2 r and this is the total energy. So, this is equal to this and this. So, what is half m v square? Half m v square is equal to this comes to this side g m m over 2 r and then minus g m m over 6 r. So, 6 r here and this is 3 times and this is minus 1 times g m m. So, this is g m m over 3 r and uh, therefore, v square is equal to m will cancel out from here and here and this 2 will go there. So, 2 times g capital M by 3 r and so, v is equal to square root of 2 g m over 3 r. So, when the rockets are fired and it goes in the elliptical orbit the energy is increased and the new energy is given by this quantity 
and that is uh, sum of uh, kinetic energy and potential energy and from there you can calculate that the new speed should be this old speed was here and therefore the change in speed is equal to the this energy final energy square root of 2 g m over 3 r and then minus square root of g m over 2 r that is it. So, if you take this uh, square root of g m by r common what you are left with square root of g m by r common. So, this is a square root of 2 by 3 this is a square root of 2 by 3 and then minus square root of 1 by 2. So, square root of 1 by 2 and check that this is positive it must be positive we have given energy we have increased the speed the total energy is more in elliptical orbit. So, this is 2 by 3 that is uh, 0 0.67 or so this is 1 by 2 0 0.5. So, this is positive. So, this much of increase in speed is is uh, occurring at this point A all right. So, that is part B part C in the second stage rockets are fired when the spacecraft is at B here the rockets are fired here in its elliptical path this takes the spacecraft to the final circular orbit that means to this final circular orbit of radius 4 r and again you have to find find the change in the speed in this operation. So, exactly similar procedure you know how much is the total energy in when it was in elliptical orbit before firing the rockets and that is here energy when it goes to this. So, this is this is the total energy in this elliptical orbit and when it goes to the circular orbit what is the energy now. So, you know that uh, the radius is 4 r. So, it will be minus k by 2 a you can use that and you get the change in the speed. 